Ladies, are you struggling with low back or SI joint pain and you have searched the internet, find that the exercises that are out there are not working for your body? Today, we are going to be discussing exercises that I recommend for women specifically to do who have low back or SI joint pain. Now, many people may be questioning, why can't I do all the exercises the same as the guys do it? Well, there's two big reasons. The first reason, ladies, is that our hips tend to be bigger than male hips, which means how we distribute our force through our legs and then up through our torso is different. And this is important when it comes to exercises. The second reason that it's important that we do different exercises than the men do is because we have a hormonal cycle that goes up and down every 28 days or so which means how our bodies are reacting, the inflammation level that's happening and how our tissues are absorbing everything changes throughout the month. So sometimes you can start doing some really aggressive exercises and they may be too much for your body at that time. So today what we're gonna be discussing is my top four exercises that every woman should be doing, whether or not you have low back pain or SI joint pain, but definitely if you're struggling with low back or SI joint pain, these are the exercises that are safe to do even if you have pain and that I recommend you do daily. We'll start by explaining each of the different exercises, then I'll demonstrate that exercise and tell you how many reps and sets I recommend you do every day. The first exercise we're gonna do is a pelvic tilt. Now this is how I recommend all women start working on any abdominal exercise because it helps to focus on the lower abdominals. And especially if you've had children, it's more difficult for you to activate those lower abdominals. But even if you haven't had children, most of us don't tend to use them as much as we should. We tend to focus more on the upper abdominals or the bigger ones. They're easier to access and easier for our brain to connect with. So we're gonna really focus on those lower abdominals and performing a pelvic tilt. Now, you do wanna be careful because you don't wanna allow too much motion in your low back or your SI joint because this can cause pain. And if you already have pain, we definitely don't wanna increase it. So it's trying to get a small pelvic tilt, but making sure that it's not increasing your pain. Ready? Here we go. Now, I like to incorporate this with deep breathing because deep breathing activates the vagus nerve, which makes everything feel better anyway. So why not? So we're going to do some deep breathing along with this deep abdominal work. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a deep belly breath, trying to get your belly to expand as much as you can. Then blow out like you're blowing a birthday candle out. And at the end, you're gonna squeeze those abdominals down. Now, you may not be able to see a motion in my low back. I can feel it moving just a little bit, but that's the point. We don't wanna have this huge pelvic tilt, which you may see with some exercises. If you're having low back or SI joint pain, that can increase your pain. So it is a bit of a pelvic tilt, but it's really more of an abdominal contraction. So you're gonna breathe in through your nose, deep belly breath, out like you're blowing out a candle and then contracting those abdominals those lower abdominals at the end now if you're not sure if you're contracting these muscles and they're down here they're in between your hip bones these are the muscles we're really aiming for of course you're going to get these upper abdominals as well but these are the ones we're aiming for here if you can't tell if you're using them or not Put your hands inside those hip bones and see if you feel a tightening underneath as you're blowing out. I usually recommend people do this for about 15 breaths. If it's very difficult for you to do and be able to get that contraction, try to work on it a couple times a day until it becomes easier. The next exercise we're gonna do is my absolute favorite for low back and SI joint pain. It's a very small motion exercise that helps to get the multifidi or the little guide wires in the low back firing well. 
This is really, really important because whenever you have low back or SI joint pain, the big muscles take over. So those big back extensors, those ropey muscles that go up and down your spine, those muscles take over. And when they do, they cause compression of the facet joints, the discs, the ligaments, the muscles. It's not a good situation. So what we want to do is get those guide wires to kick back in to control that joint motion and decrease your pain. Here we go. So you're going to start laying on your back with your knees bent and your feet together. You want to keep your knees and feet together during this entire exercise. I'm going to have you put your hands inside those hip bones again so you can feel that muscle contraction. It's going to be similar to what we had with the last exercise. Now what you're going to do is bring your knees down to the right side just a little bit until that left hip just comes off the table. You're going to use the muscles here underneath your left hand to push that hip back down and bring those knees back. So knees go down, hip comes up, hip comes down, knees come back. Notice that this is a really, really small motion. If you're going further than that, you're going to actually activate the big muscles, which is not what we're looking for today. We're going to do one side at a time. And we're going to do 20 repetitions. Then we're going to switch to the other side and do 20 repetitions. So now my knees are going to the left side. My right hip comes up. I use the muscles to push it down. Now my hands are just here to feel those muscles. I'm not actually pushing down with them. I could have my hands up here and do the same thing and get that same muscle activation. But having your hands here can help you feel those muscles working. So the hands are not doing the work, the muscles are doing the work. You're gonna do two sets of 20 reps to each side. And usually I'll have people do this exercise every hour if they have a lot of pain. Or if you're just doing this for maintenance, do it once a day. Now, what many ladies do not understand is that because our hips are wider, that puts a lot of tension through our hips, which can cause pain in the low back. So next we're gonna work on decreasing the tension through our low hips. My favorite stretch for that is the figure four stretch. To start this stretch, what you're gonna do is lay on your back with your knees bent and your knees and your feet are gonna be approximately hip width apart. You're gonna take one foot and put it on the opposite knee and then you can put your hand on your knee to increase the stretch through that hip. That should feel like a good stretch to the hip. It should not bother your low back at all. If it does, back off a little bit and decrease that stretch. Now, if you're in this position and you're like, I'm not really feeling anything and you need to amp it up a little bit, what you can do is reach back and grab that left leg and hold on to that. And that'll give you a nice stretch through that right hip. I usually have people hold this for 10 seconds. And then, of course, we want to switch and do the other side and get that nice stretch. Or this stretch may be enough for you. Find where you feel your comfortable level of stretching that you can hold for 10 seconds and keep breathing. If it's so painful you stop breathing, it's too much of a stretch. And do it twice on each side. I'll usually have people do this twice a day while they have low back pain or once a day for maintenance. Okay, now that the outside of the hips are more flexible, we need to work on the inside of the thigh. You see, the outside of the hips are the abductor muscles, abductors. Those muscles are responsible for keeping our hips stable while we're walking. If they're not working correctly or they're really tight, the muscles on the inside of the thigh or the adductor muscles will try to take over, which means they get tight really quick. To do this stretch, what we're going to do is start with our feet together, knees together, knees bent up, just like we did earlier. Then you're going to keep those feet together and let those knees come out to the side. You may have done this in sitting before, but if you're having low back or SI joint pain, that can be a little bit difficult. This position puts your low back and your SI joint in a really safe place, but gets a nice stretch through those adductors. With this stretch, I'll have people hold it for 10 seconds and do two to three reps until they feel like they've had a good stretch. And I would do this every time you do the figure four stretch. 
There it is. The top four exercises and stretches that I recommend every woman do daily, but definitely if you're suffering with low back or SI joint pain. If you found the other exercises on the internet to be too difficult to do or to actually increase your pain, these should make you feel better. You should actually feel decreased pain after you do them for a period of time. The great thing about these is that you can do them regularly throughout the day without causing any adverse effects. Now, the trifecta would be to work on your pelvic floor. So I'm going to link this video below that I recommend every woman do who has a pelvic floor. And that's you, because every woman has a pelvic floor. Daily, in order to keep their pelvic floor healthy, strong, and flexible.